Hey everyone, welcome back to The Dabbler's Den. I'm Chris Cottrell, and today's video is going to focus on a topic that I have been working on for quite some time. I've mentioned in my previous videos that the ideas I present here about the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis aren't necessarily my own. I'll certainly take credit for creating the term Splash Chevron uh, or bringing attention to the size of the southeastern flood basins as they relate to the laws of superposition <laughs> and the uh, coastal plain, but most of what I have discussed here um, on the Dabbler's Den and in these videos uh, has been the work of others that I have agreed with uh, and really have been more of a means to an end for my my own ideas. Um, as you can as you can see from the title um, of this video, you know I have found that the Okefenokee Swamp of southeastern Georgia uh, to be quite anomalous and in fact could very well be the smoking gun that everyone is looking for uh, that will help tie all of this together. Now, this is something that I was really hoping to get down on paper first, uh, but just haven't had the time to do that yet. And uh, I've realized that just sitting on it quietly right now won't do anyone any good. So, um, you know, and, and really sometimes timing is, is everything. You know, just within the past month, um, or at least at the time of this recording anyways, Graham Hancock uh, came out with his book titled America Before in support of Antonio Zamora's work on the Carolina base, uh, which really has the potential to be huge for this topic. Um, I've been supporting Zamora and his work from the very beginning. Uh, it's actually one of the reasons why I started this series on the Carolina base in the first place. So having his work highlighted in a top 10 bestseller can only help. Um, a few weeks ago, I also sat down with the guys from the Seven Ages Audio Journal while up at the uh, White Pond Archaeological Dig. Uh, and it discussed my work here on YouTube and off of YouTube. Um, and you can actually catch that interview by clicking on the link above or going uh, through their website in the description below. Um, I've also had the opportunity to talk with both Michael Davis and George Howard on the phone recently. Uh, and it was actually George who helped me decide to go ahead and, and, and put this information that I've been sitting on uh, out there, you know, to, to, you know, just get it out there. You know, sometimes you just have to strike while the iron is hot and then sort out the rest later. And the iron is hot right now. Uh, so, so let's go ahead and talk about the Carolina Bays and the Okefenokee Swamp. Okay, so what do we know about the land of trembling earth? Uh, well, first of all, it's the it's North America's largest swamp, occupying over 700 square miles. Uh, this gigantic wetland contains huge tracts of cypress forest, uh, wet, uh, open wet prairies, scrub forests, um, open lakes, and small upland islands. Uh, the Okefenokee is located in southeast Georgia, only about an hour west of the coast where I live. Uh, and actually just or just beyond the reach of, of some of the uh, really large Carolina bays. Um, along its eastern border lies a massive ridge of sand known as Trail Ridge. Uh, this ridge is what remains of a 130 mile long barrier island that existed when the seas were much, much higher, um, about 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1.8 million years ago. Uh, and behind this island, this massive island, was likely a very large salt marsh, uh, which provided the impermeable clay bottom of the now Okefenokee. Um, so again, this has been in the works for a long time, but uh, um, it's also important to note that the Okefenokee only has two natural drainages. Uh, the Suwannee River uh, to the southwest that drains some 90% of the swamp, and the St. Mary's River to the southeast that only drains between 5 to 10%. Uh, so when the water enters the Okefenokee by precipitation, it tends to stick around for a while before finally reaching one of the drainages uh, to, to or, or being evaporated. Um, now, the most fascinating aspect about any of this uh, is that the oldest peat collected has only been dated to around six or 7,000 years ago. Um, so the Okefenokee is a very young geologic formation. The swamp itself definitely formed within the Holocene, and that's going to be very, very important for what I'm about to talk about. Okay, so before I click over to Google Earth for part two of this presentation, uh, where, where we do a, uh, a LiDAR field trip, um, I want to go ahead and show you this map that I created to familiarize yourself with some of the locations I'll be pointing out. Uh, you know, Obviously, the big flat area uh, in the middle is the Okefenokee Swamp. Uh, over here, we have some of the really large Carolina Bays. Um, this one right here is actually Grand Bay, um, the one that I highlighted in one of my earlier Dabbler Den videos with my daughter. 
Um, we have the Suwannee River right here. Again, this is the main drainage of the Okefenokee Swamp, as well as the St. Mary's River over here, uh, down here in the southeast corner, uh, which is a minor drainage, but still a very, very important one. Uh, and it's going to be very important for this for this story. Um, we also have two other river systems that I want to point out here. We have the Alapaha, which runs right here to the uh, west, and we also have the Satilla River that runs right here to the north of the uh, of these um, Okefenokee Swamp. Um, and then right here, running along the entire eastern border of the swamp, is Trail Ridge. Uh, and again, you could tell that it's uh, it's a, a drastic difference between this you know lower coastal plain and and, and the swamp area. So this was definitely uh, going to be an important part of the overall story. Now, what I think happened here, and I'm going to discuss this more in part two. I'm just going to kind of highlight it right now, and then we'll talk about more in part two and when I have the LIDAR on. Um, but what I think happened is uh, after the initial impact into the Laurentide Ice Sheet, way up in the Michigan area, um, the huge chunks of ice, as well as all the small pieces of ice and, and you know, just completely covering the eastern portion of the U.S., uh, as well as to the west, um, you know, that created the Nebraska rainwater basins. Um, but all of these, um, all this ice came down uh, immediately following this. We, we likely had, you know, torrential rainfalls. Um, this ice started to melt. Uh, and again, this was all very shortly after the initial impact and the secondary impacts of the huge ice chunks that would have came down afterwards. Um, all of that water had to go somewhere. And it starts to, to collect and drain in these small tributaries up in the Piedmont. Uh, once it hits the fall line, uh, it really starts to erode and take away and uh, cut these these very large um, drainage basins, again, that I've discussed in some of my earlier videos. Um, and these very large drainage basins were just full of, of water draining off of the coastal plain, um, erasing some of the Carolina bays and just, just a massive exodus of water leaving the east. Uh, now, if you notice, again, we have a major drainage here, the Alapaha, and we have a major drainage to the north. There's no drainages here at the time. Um, I do think that the Trail Ridge um, came across right here, and the St. Mary's River wasn't a thing yet, um, you know, before this event. All this water came in, started rushing down, uh, and actually got stopped by the uh, Trail Ridge, where it basically sat as a stagnant, mucky mess of a pond or a lake uh, for a really long time. Um, I'm probably, a, you know, a couple thousand years, literally, uh, at least throughout the Younger Dryas. Uh, and it wasn't until conditions started to get better after the Younger Dryas where we start to see the formation of that peat. Um, and again, this would have been a couple thousand years later after that, uh, the peat starts to form. Again, some of the oldest peat that we found is dated to be about 7,000 years old. Um, I'm, I'd imagine we could probably find some older into the 8,000 year range. Um, but I think that this just sat there and over the past 10,000 years or so uh, has has turned into what we now know of as the Okefenokee Swamp. Uh, and we did have a breach of the um, Trail Ridge, again, which is what created the St. Mary's River. Uh, you can see, uh, and again, I'll show you more in the ladder field trip, uh, this breach uh, almost created another river down here through uh, uh, Nassau County, uh, which is in up, upper Florida. Uh, but instead, it, it went to the north and then out to the sea, creating the St. Mary's River. So anyways, um, and, and something interesting about this, this lake that would have been here, and this is something, again, I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on. Um, but something I've noticed over and over and over again is when we look at the very earliest maps of the East Coast, uh, which are, it's, it's been known that these maps were, were often um, taken from older maps, uh, older, older source maps, uh, but they all included this very large body of water in the Georgia area. Uh, and they all look at like lakes. Um, and there is no lake, you know, here is Lake, Lake Magnus, uh, the Appalachie Lake, you know, there's, we've got all these big lakes, um, and, and this lake is not here. There is no lake in Georgia like this, but we do have this big swamp, the Okefenokee Swamp. Uh, and I do find that interesting. I don't want to read too much into it right now, uh, but I wanted to mention it. And guys, when we come back for part two, we will get into the LIDAR field trip and uh, actually look at Google Earth. And, uh, and, and see if we can, can peg this down a little bit, a little bit more securely. All right, guys, come back for part two.